Alrighty, folks, let us talk about some of the situations of first real big conflict of the Cold War. And in order to get there, we got to talk about East Germany. Now, when it comes to talking about East Germany, uh, East Germany is under the Soviet sphere of influence, meaning it is heavily in the process of becoming communist. We can see the map of uh, former Germany right here, and it's going to be split up really into two uh, differing zones at this point. We've got the uh, Soviet zone right over here. We've got the British, the American, and the French zone, which is going to be on the West. Okay, Democratic versus communist zones right over here. Now, the issue we're going to have, again, as we already talked about it previously, uh, discussing the uh, breakup of Germany after World War II, is the capital of Berlin is going to be located entirely in the eastern zone, which is controlled by the communists, controlled by the Soviets. Uh, so we're going to take Berlin, and we're going to split Berlin up into two separate zones. Okay, we're going to have or four separate zones, but really basically two separate zones. We're going to have the Soviets controlling one zone, East Berlin, and we're going to have West Berlin controlled by the Americans, the British, and the French. Now, this is going to be problematic because it's located 100 miles within the Soviet zone. So there could be some problems coming up. And we're going to see just how those problems get going, particularly when we talk about the Berlin blockade. Now, the Berlin blockade goes from the 24th of June, 1948, to the 12th of May, 1949. The issue going on is Germany's economy is weak. Okay? It is incredibly, incredibly weak. Uh, the really only thing in Germany that really has any value at this time period, particularly in Berlin, is cigarettes from the black market. Okay? People are trading cigarettes because it's really the only thing uh, that has any value. German currency is incredibly weak and is not really of any value at this point anymore. Uh, the Americans, the British, and the French attempt to kind of fix this, and every time they do, the Soviets simply print a bunch of money, flood it into the system, and continue to keep the currency very, very weak. Uh, this is problematic because they're viewing the, a Western viewpoint on this is a weak German economy is what led to the rise of Hitler in the first place. Now, the Soviets with Stalin and the other side are thinking, we want them to be weak because they've invaded us twice in the last 25 years and we're kind of sick and tired of fighting wars with the Germans. So there's going to be a little bit of a conflict going on right through here. Again, as I just talked about, Stalin wants a weak Germany because he feels that a strong Germany is going to be a threat to peace. Again, the Soviet Union has already, or Russia, uh, has already fought two wars with the Germans in the last 25, 30 years. They're not wanting to have a third one, so they want to make sure that Germany stays weak so that Germany cannot be a threat. The United States, the United Kingdom, and France want a strong Germany because they're recognizing that the reason Hitler and the Nazis came to power in the first place was because Germany was weak. The Treaty of Versailles had some issues that made Germany incredibly weak, and the German people resented that and led to a strong man like Adolf Hitler led to that authoritarianism. So what's going to happen? Uh, the West is going to implement a new currency, and Stalin is upset by this. He threatens to block access to West Berlin um, if they are going to implement this new currency. And his hope uh, is that if he cuts off access to West Berlin, it's going to force the West to stop uh, this new currency plan. Okay, They're going to have either two options. Either one, they're not going to implement this new currency, and Stalin's going to get what he wants by having an economically weak Berlin and economically weak Germany. Or number two, they're just going to give up Berlin altogether, which is something Stalin really wants as well. He does not like having this little pocket, this little enclave of the Western-controlled allies inside of his zone. He doesn't like this. He wants Berlin to be totally his. So he's like, this is a win-win for us. Uh, now, the West is going to implement this new currency anyways. They're going to do a surprise at night. Stalin wakes up. Stalin is ticked, like Stalin would often get. And he's like, this is not OK. Uh, so he's going to block off all access into Berlin. He's going to close the railroads. He's going to close the streets. He's going to, going to close off the canals. Additionally, the uh, power station, which is located in East Berlin, that supplies power to West Berlin, is going to be shut off. So there's now no way to get any supplies into Berlin, and this is going to be incredibly, incredibly problematic. As you can see right through here, okay, there's going to be three different options. We've got the roads closed off. We've got the rails closed, okay? One thing that's not going to be closed, though, is going to be the air. Now, Truman, President of the United States, has to act fast because Berlin's got about 45 days of supplies left, and the city will fall. So he's got to do something quick. He has given three different options. Option number one is retreat. Now, he can retreat and simply back out of the situation. This is going to save American lives. They're going to allow him to implement the new currency. 
However, it's also going to give Berlin to the Soviets. It's gonna make Truman look incredibly weak. Option number two is to launch an attack. This is gonna be good because he's gonna be showing his power, his strength, but he also realizes that if you launch an attack right now, you might get World War III, and that's not something anyone wants. Option number three is simply just stand back, do nothing, and wait until the, uh, the citizens in Berlin rebel and eventually are forced to accept Soviet domination. The positive of this one is you're not risking a war. You're also not looking weak for just giving up Berlin, but you're kind of looking weak and giving up Berlin at the same time. Uh, Truman, though, is going to take a different path, and he's going to use an airlift. Previously, there was a little bit of precedence already going on right through here, um, that Berlin had temporarily been cut off before, and the way they kept the city sur uh, surviving was through an airlift. Now, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to develop this operation called Operation Vittles. So you can see the picture right here. This was a plan that Truman devised, um, and the American generals initially are like, dude, there's no way this is going to work. There's no way we can fly in enough supplies into Berlin to keep the city going. It's just simply not going to happen. The British were a little bit more uh, optimistic and thought this is possible. However, they realized the only country that had even remotely enough military power to do this and supplies to do this was going to be the Americans. So the American generals eventually got on board uh, because they had to, and this is what's going to happen. Uh, they're gonna open an air corridor to fly in uh, few, few food, fuel, supplies, uh, and they're gonna be landing roughly every 30 minutes. Okay, so they're going to go, they're gonna fly, they're gonna land, they're gonna drop off their supplies, they're gonna come back and go back and forth. Uh, this is gonna consistently keep happening. Uh, it's gonna me be meant as a short-term plan, however, it's going to last for over a year. Uh, Stalin did threaten to shoot down some of these planes, however, doing so would have been an act of war. Uh, the Americans took this risk anyways and called Stalin's bluff. Although Stalin publicly stated he was willing to shoot down these planes, he wasn't actually willing to do so because it would have started a war, he called down their bluff. Uh, there were American or Soviet AA guns on the ground, anti-aircraft guns aimed at these planes ready to shoot them out of the sky. Um, there's going to be issues with Soviet fighter planes buzzing by uh, these cargo planes getting ready to shoot them down, and it's going to be deeply problematic. Um, over this entire airlift, there's going to be 2.3 million tons of goods delivered over the entire airlift. Uh, we're gonna have one instance of a pilot who's reaching out the window of the plane, dropping down little bags of candy on parachutes to the children down below, which was incredibly popular. Um, this person ended up going back on a PR campaign back in the United States to really give some like, look at what we're doing, look what Stalin's doing, uh, and give the Americans this real big kind of publicity, real positive publicity. This is going to work, okay? Uh, Stalin is going to look incredibly weak. His plan was, we're just not gonna do anything. Once winter comes, they're not gonna be able to get their supplies in. The weather will be too bad. Um, the Americans just keep on trucking away and they keep doing it. So Stalin eventually is forced to open up supply chains into Berlin. Uh, he looks incredibly weak. He is embarrassed and the West looks incredibly, incredibly strong. They have a new sense of morale, a new power structure in place. And they're like, we cannot be stopped by you, Stalin. There is nothing you can do to stop us. And that is going to be the real big takeaway of the Berlin airlift. One side calling another side's bluff. Uh, getting right on that brink of something really bad happening and something else gets out of the way. That is all for now. Questions, comments, put it below. Otherwise, I will see you later.